So this is another travel day for us. We're leaving our site. We've been here for two weeks now in Camp Verde in the Coconino National Forest. And you can see behind me, our rig is almost completely ready to go. Uh, recently, what we've been doing is hooking up the night before and getting completely ready to go so that in the morning, we can just wake up, get dressed, and leave because we're trying to solve an issue where we just take so long in the morning. So if we have like a long travel day, like an eight hour day, it, it takes us like two, maybe three hours just to get on the road. So hooking up the night before and just getting completely ready saves us so much time and makes it so much more likely that we're gonna arrive to our campsite before night, which is just so incredibly important. You fellow RVers and travelers, I'm sure know that arriving at your next site at night is such a pain because you just can't pick, you know, the right perfect site if there are multiple ones or if there's just one site. It's just really hard to like scope it out and see where the perfect spot to set your trailer down at or to park your rig at is. So yeah, arriving at night, awful but we were trying to get all set up last night and we had an issue, something broke that just kind of put the brakes on getting ready. So I was trying to put this stuff into the bed of the truck. You know, we were getting ready to leave, packing up the back of the truck. So the tailgate is opening and closing the whole time. And then just all of a sudden, the tailgate won't open. It's just stuck closed. Come to find out the issue was this linkage right here this plastic green part broke from this, if you can see it, this little other link right here that it hooks onto. So this plastic piece pushes through that and is retained through that other linkage and it just broke and fell off and was just flapping useless. So basically this side of the tailgate wouldn't unlatch to open up, whereas that side still would. So, you know, my jerry-rigged solution to this was I plastic epoxied this uh, green piece to that other linkage up there and, you know, I left it overnight, uh, you know, with this clamp on there, just hoping that maybe epoxying it on there would, would work. I don't have very high hopes though because this, you know, the, the link, the two links have to rotate just a little bit as they actuate. So I'm kind of thinking that epoxy is just going to bind that up and instantly break. But you know, it's worth a try at least. Thankfully, it's not that big of an issue. You know, we've, we've had much worse things break, like our tongue jack and our fridge failed on us once too. So like this isn't a huge thing, but it's still pretty annoying, you know, especially because stuff like this on cars just frustrates the heck out of me. Like why did General Motors on these Silverados use a plastic retainer for that linkage? These tailgates open and close thousands of times within the life of a truck. So like why are you gonna rely on a piece of plastic to hold up. It's just going to fail. And of course, it turns out that this, you know, I did some research, it is a really, really common problem on these Silverados. So like, when car manufacturers do stuff like this, it's just so frustrating. Cause you know, they, they made the decision to go with plastic instead of a metal retaining clip because they wanted to save five or 10 cents, you know, on every truck they sold. So yeah, this stuff just frustrates the heck out of me. But at least uh, I was able to find a replacement or um, th that little green plastic thing. I was able to find those on Amazon. It was only $5 for six of them, which is nice. So I'll have them on hand in case it fails again. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see if this epoxy holds. I bet it doesn't. All right, so I took the clamp off. And yeah, you can see the epoxy job on this link. Thankfully that one is still holding, but you know, who knows for how long, but let's see if this epoxy job holds. I'm gonna open this up real slow. Yeah, you can see how they actuate. All right, well it worked. It worked at least once. <laughs> Hopefully that holds. I'm not really expecting it to hold very long, maybe a couple days, but you know, I've got those other actuators, Amazon Prime, so they'll be here in just two days, thankfully. And yeah, you can see all our trash. That's where we keep it in the bed of the truck. I'm sure that looks great, right? And again, another thing that bothers me about modern cars and their overuse of plastic to retain things is this is the bezel that goes around the tailgate handle. And what happened when I had to pop this off to get to those links is these two 
the little retaining uh, clips, whatever you want to call them, just broke off. It just broke right off. And I took this thing off real gentle too. And but these plastic things just broke right off. So you can see I epoxied those back on as well. And I don't know how long that's gonna last either or if it'll even last at all or if they'll just break off as soon as I try and put that thing back on. But I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna order a new one of those too. I was able to find those online. But yeah, it's just frustrating. Everything is plastic on modern cars. Uh, you know, they could have just held this in with a couple screws like here and here and it would have been just fine But they just you know, they have to save like five cents here and there. It's frustrating So just know if you're preparing to full-time RV or just RV in general, you know stuff is just gonna fall apart when you are out on site and you need to be prepared to fix random small things like that. So a couple of tools that you guys should have on hand if you're gonna be RVing is um, this JB Weld Plastic Bond. It's a two-part epoxy made especially for plastic and the reason I say that you need a plastic one is because typical two-part epoxy won't work on a lot of common types of plastic. It'll just fall right off when it dries. So I've used this a number of times to repair plastic parts and you know I'm glad I had this on hand so that I could epoxy that plastic piece on the truck bed too and another thing is a staple gun we have this mechanical one and we also have a pneumatic one because uh, we've got an air compressor in the bed of the truck but if you don't want to tow around or haul around an air compressor just get a handheld one and we have stapled a number of parts uh, in the trailer back together. Our walls have separated. Uh, we've had cabinet sides start to separate off and it's nice to have one of these on hand. You can just chunk them back into place. So yeah, plastic two-part epoxy and a staple gun. All right, we've got to get out of here. I've been talking long enough. We've got a full travel day ahead of us. Let's go. today we are doing something that we have never done before while traveling on the road and that is we are meeting friends who are flying from a different state at a specific destination and hanging out we have eight of our friends flying in from Washington to Las Vegas Nevada Woo! 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 Vegas! <laughs> we are going to spend um, tomorrow which is Saturday through Tuesday at an RV park, and that'll be fun. Uh, not, I, well, we don't like RV parks. Well, it's awesome, because like our friends are staying at a hotel on the Strip, and yeah. we were like, oh man, like it's gonna be such a pain. Oh, we're gonna have to drive like, so far. Yeah, because we know of a few boondocking sites around Vegas. Uh, yeah, that but, we already like, that we were like, we, or we know where we can stay for free, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah and, like, <sighs> and then we started thinking about that, and we were like, wait, those boondocking sites are like 40 minutes from the strip, maybe 30 minutes. And then That's we gonna have, be, we, cause we're gonna have to come back during to, the day to take care of the pets, make sure yeah. everyone's taken care of and all that. Probably change because Absolutely. we have outfits planned out, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, <laughs> we do actually. <laughs> so then we were like, well, maybe we can find somewhere in Vegas. And Jenny did some searching and was able yep. to find us a campsite yep. at Circus Circus Casino. Yep. Circus, circus. Camp campsite in RV park. Yeah, RV park. And was like fifty dollars a night. Technically, it's a resort. Okay, so it was it was fifty eight dollars a night for Friday and Saturday, and then forty eight dollars a night for Sunday and Monday night. And that isn't awful when you think about like being in downtown or middle of Vegas on the Strip. So it's not that bad until they hit you with the extra resort, the fee, resort fee of $108. Yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> like a, 
What? It's like thirty-two dollars a night resort fees on top of the fifty dollar. But we uh. we we think there's a chance that we might be able to get that waived because we're not doing any va uh, like resort stuff at yeah. Circus Circus. We're literally just staying there, so we're gonna talk to someone at the desk see if we can get that waived. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if we can't, it's still worth it in my opinion. Because we get to see all our friends. We're I'm literally so excited. we're literally a mile and a half yep. from where they are staying, their hotel, which is awesome. We'll be able to just Uber back and forth. Yep. Um, and Uber home and check on the pets. Yep. We'll have our camera set up and we'll have good signal. Yep. So we will, we'll be able to look at them all the time. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, but we're just so excited because the first time we went to Vegas, we didn't do anything Vegasy. y we, nope. we drove down the strip and we saw the pretty lights and all that stuff, but that was it. We didn't do anything because it was just Jenny and I and we were like, eh, it's because that's like gambling isn't really our thing. That yeah. sort of nightlife type stuff isn't really our our vibe yeah but now that our friends are coming that just changes everything yeah. and we're gonna party yeah it's gonna be <laughs> all 10 of us and this, these are like some of our favorite people in the world and we're yeah. so excited so we're leaving today friday but we're not getting into vegas until tomorrow saturday even though it's only about a six hour drive from where we are and the reason being is because we booked our RV park stay starting tomorrow morning, but uh, we could have booked it today, but it saved us like $90 not to stay one whole extra night. Um, so what we're doing today is we are getting relatively close um, and we are going to be staying in a Cracker Barrel overnight. In Kingman. In Kingman, Arizona. Yep. It's like, how far away from Vegas is it? It's like an hour and a half. Yeah, it's super close to Las Vegas. Yeah, so we're gonna get up at like 8 a.m. and drive in. Um, technically, their check-in time isn't until two o'clock, but their check-out time is at 11, and we called them and they said those aren't super solid times. It's not strict, so it's we can strict. roll in. We can yeah. roll in, and as long as there's a site open for the size that we booked, we can take it. So we're gonna try and get in at about 10 o'clock, get all set up so that when our friends land at 10.30, we are ready to go yeah. and we can meet them at their hotel and all this stuff. Now, if you noticed, back to wearing the hat for today. <laughs> but the only reason is because we are super low on water. So I wasn't able to take a shower or even just wash my hair today. Yeah, normally we run out of water approximately four days or so before we leave a campsite. So this time, as we were getting low on water, we thought to ourselves, well, we can go fill up on water, but this is the first time in a little while that we've had to pay for water fill. We can typically find free water fill around us, and there just isn't a free place around us that's super close. So we just decided, let's just go into super conservation mode and just forgo getting more water this yeah. time. Like, I think we have enough. I think, I think we, we have enough. And, and we oh, did. We did. We, have enough. we had enough. It was super close though, but um, I wanted to share with you guys a couple things that we do in order to conserve water usage. Um, one of the main things we do, and this isn't just when we're running low on water, this is all the time. We try and cook single pot meals that are still good for you or single dish meals that are still good for you. And then when we're low on um, things like plates or bowls, we typically use paper plates instead if we can. And we don't always use paper plates. That is no. only when we're like really low on water and there's, you know, we can't fill back up is, you know, we paper plates so that we don't have to wash the other plates yeah. and the single skillet so that we don't have to wash multiple yeah. dishes. Yeah, the, and that really, that is the honestly the biggest thing that conserves water for us is um, not having too many dishes to do because honestly washing dishes uses the most amount of water for us. Yeah, and then what else? Um, so when it comes to other things, for example, taking showers, um, we've already shared that David and I don't shower every day. That would be a well, massive waste can't. of water. Yeah, if you're boondocking and you yeah. plan on being out there for a, you know a decent amount of time, two yeah. weeks is what we usually do. Yeah, you just can't. It's just gonna you're gonna blast through all your water if you shower yeah. every day. So um, we we try and conserve our showers to make sure that we're not using too much water. And um, when we're getting super low on water, we use, they're, they're actually toilet wipes. They're, um, they're like toilet cleansing wipes for your body. And uh, we use those on like, you know, our armpits and other parts that might start to get sinky. And uh, 
then I also have dry shampoo that I can use in my hair, but it makes my head really itchy, so I don't like to use it a whole lot. And then, obviously, we resort to things like hats. Yeah. <laughs> yep, if you can't wash your hair, if you can't, if this is just, what the heck is going on up there? You just throw on a hat, you know, our viewers know, or anyone else that, you know, has had a bad hair day before, just yep. hide it with a hat, you're good to go. <laughs> hide it with a hat, no big deal. No pastas. You know, oh, yeah. or, or anything that requires you to boil in water, yeah. and then you just dump that water out. That's yeah. another thing. You know, that's cooking. a super big thing. Yeah, yeah. just uh, don't cook with any water. Use uh, you know, cook something like eggs or meat or you know, fry stir fry veggies in a yeah. skillet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other day I went grocery shopping and I bought a big old thing of tortellini and I was so excited to get it home and cook it. I remember, yeah, yeah. And I even called David and I said, hey, will you put a pot of water on the stove? I'm making tortellini tonight. And I was like, we have like a gallon of water left, yeah. max, and we have an entire day to get through. <laughs> so, so, no. Yep, yeah, so that didn't happen. So today, while we're out on our way to Kingman, Arizona, I want to shower, David wants to shower, and I have a whole sink of dishes that I want to get done. Um, and I don't want to have to do those tomorrow yeah. when we get to Vegas. So today on our way, we are going to find a place to fill up our water for free. And then when we stop at the Cracker Barrel in Kingman, we're both going to shower and do the dishes so that we're all nice and clean, ready to go for tomorrow. And then we don't have to worry about it because we're going to have full hookups in the RV site. Yep. So we don't have to worry about it afterwards. So we only have to fill up enough water for showers yep. and dishes. Full hookups, that means AC for the animals. Yep. Unlimited water, water for us. We're good to go. Oh, and I do just want to say, this whole time we've been driving down a National Forest Road, <laughs> I've been going 10, 15 mile an hour. So I just want to reiterate that for anyone uh, that might looking say, at the camera yeah. and stuff. It's we're good. He's going 15 mile an hour. Yeah, right? done a, single lane. Done a rather, <laughs> rather bumpy single lane road yeah. in the National Forest. Yeah. All right, we're good. Let's to Vegas. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Oh, well, we upset Butters. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh. That is an actual thing. She gets upset if we... Uh, if we're make... too loud. We can't... We have to stay... We have to... We have to stay calm and Fragile quiet. mental state right here. She gets very upset. Fragile. Okay, come on, come on, let's go. Oh my goodness, all right, I'll be right back. I think this cat's gotta go potty. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Hi, BB. Hi, BB. All right, we're, we're just gonna do a potty break for everyone. Come on, Allie cat, come on. Alrighty. Yeah, Butters was, she just started meowing like crazy and she never does that. Um, she's just like looking you straight in the eye and just meowing, telling you, like very much telling you, I need something. So we figure, she might have to go to the bathroom. So we just pulled off and um, there's this nice big like pull off area. It's great. We pulled off the interstate and onto this. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna let Allie go too, just in case. Sweetie girl also. Come on, pup. Alrighty. Come on. Come on, sweetie. Go potty. We're also making sure that all the pets get some water. Since we're doing a potty break, we might as well give them a little bit. Sweetie, are you thirsty? Yeah, are you thirsty? Oh, good girl. The cats have some water too, and everybody's taking a nice little break good. Always got to take care of the pets. And then back on the road. And then back on the road. Back at it again. There has been a very slight change of plans today, which uh, Butters is in my lap all of a sudden, and that is amazing. Um, the change of plans is that we are not staying in Kingman, Arizona anymore. We have found a Cracker Barrel in Las Vegas. It is on the north side, and I called them. They said that they allow overnight parking, so we are just hauling the extra 
just over two hours to get there. Um, it, we're gonna get there after dark, but that's yeah. fine because we're just gonna pull in and it'll be fine. No big deal. Which is really nice because it's only like 20 minutes from the uh, Circus Circus Casino that we're gonna be staying at. So I'm actually really happy about that. We are still gonna stop near Kingman and get water so that we can both shower and do dishes so we don't have to worry about it tomorrow morning. And uh, I wanted to share with you guys something hilarious that happened during our travel live stream today. Hilarious? Okay. Try terrifying. Okay, it was terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Uh, we had just started the live stream and Alice hopped up over the back of David's chair and then just bolted down to the brake pedal and the gas pedal and then up behind the steering wheel. No, we couldn't no, even she see was, her. She was directly behind the brake pedal, yeah. which is terrifying because if I need to slam on the brakes, there's a cat in the way now and I can't. Yeah. So I immediately put the hazard flashers on and pulled off to the side of the road, fished the oh. cat out of there. Man. Yeah, that was, uh, that was awful. Normally when Alice freaks out in the truck, it's because she has to use the bathroom. And ever since she's been old enough to really hold it for a decent period of time, we haven't been leaving a litter box here inside of the truck cab. Um, we learned that she starts to like freak out yeah. when she has to use the potty. And well, let, well, the let, hard way. Let me let you guess how we learned it. <laughs> yeah. She, she pooped used, in the truck. She pooped in the truck. It yep. was awful. Oh my gosh. And we have a yeah. blanket in the back of the truck. She pooped like, right on that. It's for Sweetie to gosh. lay down so that it's like nice and soft back there for her. And yeah, yeah. she just pooped right on it. <laughs> yep. So bad. It was fantastic. So um, that happened during our live stream. And if you guys don't know or, you, or if you've never been to one of our live streams, we go live every travel day. And then we also go live the second Monday of every month. At our, our campsite. At our campsite. And uh, we actually go live twice that day. First for everybody on YouTube, and then the second time we go live as a patrons only live stream. So uh, we go live a lot during yeah, we the do. month. <laughs> I just realized as I was trying to explain all those dates. So yeah, we go live a lot. Um, if you guys haven't been to a live stream, they're a lot of fun. This one was very stressful. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they're uh, super fun. We typically, it was very bouncy. It was a big bump, yeah. It was a big bump. Uh, we typically really enjoy our live streams. They make the time pass so much faster and we typically go live for about an hour, sometimes yep. a little longer when we're traveling too. So yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys at the next live stream. Well, we're here in Kingman, Arizona at uh, Flying J for water. It's $10, but you know, I, th I think it's worth it for us to be able to shower the day before. Uh, and can we hold that real quick? <laughs> Thanks. All right. And we would be in the same city that we were gonna stay, or where the Cracker Barrel was that we were gonna overnight. But like Jenny said earlier, we were like, to heck with it, let's just motor on to Vegas the rest of the way, because it's only like, what, four o'clock? It's like 5.15. Oh, it's like 5.15. So yeah, we've got the whole evening of driving that we can just do ahead of time so we don't have to worry about it. So yeah, we're, I mean, we're not gonna get there until after dark, which kind of stinks, but it's a Cracker Barrel parking lot. So like, it really doesn't matter, right? But yeah, getting no water. And then off to where we're staying for the night. We finally made it to our overnight spot at the Cracker Barrel just north of Vegas and we are both super hungry because we've had very, very little to eat <laughs> driving all day today. So we're gonna go in and have some Cracker Barrel, you know, give them some money, thank them for giving us a spot for the night. You right? know, I've never had their dinner before. I haven't either. I've only ever had their breakfast, so. I bet it's good, their breakfast is good. good too. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah, so we're gonna go in and enjoy that and see you guys tomorrow. Do, do you have anything else to add? Good morning from Las Vegas. We got okay sleep last night, and uh, you can As you sort can, of hear you can why. Hear, it's pretty loud. Yeah, the uh, construction crew right behind us started at like 6 a.m. Yeah, bright and early in the morning. It actually scared us. I wasn't entirely sure what was going on. I thought maybe we were in the way, but we're not. So. Yeah, or I don't know. I was like, you know, you heard the beeping of a vehicle backing up, and I was like, that's not a tow truck, is it? Yeah. We asked to be here. They said we could stay overnight. 
Yeah. But yeah, it's just, you can, you can hear it now. It's just the construction behind us. They're building like a gas station or something. Um, Honestly, you might not be able to hear it over the jets, but the jets are, they're like doing practice maneuvers and they are really loud too, so. Yeah, so <laughs> everything was super loud. It woke us up at like 6 a.m. We tried to sleep until about nine because our friends aren't flying in till 10.30. 10 uh, but yeah, we are all set. Animals are in the truck. Time to go to our RV site where we're gonna be at for the next four days. Woo. The pets are all taken care of. They have water, we've got the AC on, we have a little temperature monitor right in front of our camera that monitors all the animals. So they are well taken care of. We'll be back in five hours or so to feed them so like they don't have to be alone all that long. And you know what? It's really cool to be in Vegas, but where we're camped right now is just this big, massive, wide open parking lot and it's so different from what we're used to. <sighs> we're used to being surrounded by nature. There's nobody nearby. Now we have a lot of neighbors. However, all of our friends are already partying and swimming at a pool and that's where I wanna go now. Yeah, they've been waiting for us. We've been getting the pets <laughs> ready, getting the trailer ready. It's yep. time to go. Time to go. Time to start our weekend. It's gonna be awesome. Woo! I can't wait. <laughs> and I hope you guys are having just as awesome of a time as we're about to have. Yep. We'll catch you later. Bye.